Yes, Chef! With Ryan. It is Tuesday, and you know what that means. It's food day on the show. Yes, Chef, we've had Joe McPherson filling in for a couple of weeks as Ryan was away on vacation, but he is back for this super special... And I'm sad to say, final edition of Yes Chef. <laughs> Ryan, good morning. I don't want to say good, actually. Bad morning. Well, well that's you're all back. Right. That's you, good. You never, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, so glad because yeah. imagine if your vacation overlapped with the new season change and we didn't get to say a proper goodbye. Oh, I know. That would have sucked. That would have been time. terrible. Yeah. You, you came back you yesterday. Got, you got a sharp new haircut, too. I just yeah. I just started blow drying my hair in the mornings. I sound like there. such a yeah, idiot. But anyway, uh, thank you for noticing. You looked tanned. Uh, yeah, I was out on a fishing boat. Uh, had an excellent time catching uh, striper, uh, striper with my dad. These uh, bass, they're uh, wow. Bass yeah. fishing is a big thing in the U.S., right? Oh man, and, and even in in the kind of chilly weather, uh, out on a bass boat across the lake, uh-huh. you know, and and we had some nice uh, sun that day. And did and you caught catch a some? bunch? Oh, of really? Striper? Oh yeah, yeah. Wow. I'll, I'll post a video or or some pics here soon, and then cooked them up for my grandmother, aunts and uncles, you know, nice? mom and dad. Yeah, you know, so they're folks, freshwater fish. Yeah, yeah. Folks say that they're a little bit, uh, you know, kind of fishy or, or yeah. whatever, lake, lake fishy. Kind yeah, of flavor. I don't like freshwater fish usually. Well, I, I must say that just with uh, butter, dill, and salt, they were excellent. Wow. Um, yeah, I didn't notice any fishiness on the first uh, right after cooking them. Now, now some of them I saved for the next day and I took a bite, and then I did notice a little fishiness. Okay, but if you but, left uh, them a while, maybe that was a temperature thing. So. Okay, and uh, that's yeah. where the tan came from, being on the boat with the dad. Yeah, I actually got burned, but now it's turned into a tan, thankfully. Lovely. It's great to have you back, Ryan. I'm so glad that you came in, because you got in last night. You had to cook the dish today, Yeah, which is a great one as well. I'm looking forward to this. Hallelujah. We're talking talking about kamjatang today, right, Ryan? Yeah, which is a funny thing, because, you know, do you know the misnomer story on kamjatang? Yeah, I think many Koreans think it means the potato in there as well, don't they? Yeah, for my first few years here, right, right. right. For my first few years here, I I thought, um, or I was told. Yeah. uh, and And I was so confused. I was like... But that's not the star of the dish. The star of the dish is all this other stuff. There's yeah. just like a couple of potatoes in there. But, uh, oh, whatever. Um, pot- potatoes are in it. But those, you know the story? Do you know why? Uh, I researched it this morning, but I'm not totally up with it. Can you run us through? Well, basically, um, that the the part of the, the pig, the bones, the spine, um, those are often called kamja. Or they used to be. Okay, that bone, um, right? The spine bone. Right, right, right. I don't so, know why. I, they don't look like potatoes or anything, right? It must have no. a different origin, I yeah, think, perhaps, yeah, right? Yeah, maybe back to, to Hansha or something like that. Or, uh-huh. yeah. So the the spine bones that used to be known as the kamja bones, hence kamja tang, and they really are, I guess, the main ingredient in here, right? Yeah, I mean, this is, this is something that I used to eat, man, at least once a week. Oh, I love I it as well. Out. Yeah, it's, it's a... And we've never talked about this or never had it no, on the show anyway, no. but uh, but it's such a common food. You can find 24-hour restaurants serving this pretty much no matter where you are in Korea. Any area. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're really big. And you're right. A lot of them are 24 hours because they're good to fill you up at lunchtime, at dinner time. They're good as a hangover soup in the morning. They're good while you're drinking, and lots of people like to go and have some food, like just at the end of their night. Pretty much any time. Yeah. Yeah, I've I've had this for breakfast. I've seen a lot of people on New Year's Day in Korea going to have this in the morning. Um, yeah, it's it's one of the most common foods, but we're, somehow we've never had it on the show. Yeah, I'm so glad that we're doing this yeah. for the final show. So get in your messages, saying goodbye to Ryan, giving us your ingredients from your fridge. It's your last opportunity ever to do it. But Ryan, you've really outdone yourself today. So in your famous stone pot, let's unveil the oh, goodies baby. inside. Oh, baby. Oh, look at that. It's really hot. Getting it, perilla leaves everywhere. No, Ryan, what are you doing? Sorry, no. I had to torture you one more time that that is always in this dish pretty much isn't it it's a real exception if it's not found in it i I love it i always ask for extra is there not a lot of complexity to this because it seems like there's so many things well all you really have to have for it to be kamjatang Uh are 
are the uh, the pork spine, the pork spine, and some potatoes. Um, you've got to have duinjang soybean paste, yep. um, gochujang red pepper paste, red pepper flakes, um, and soy sauce. That's kind of the main components, and, and garlic, of course. Yeah, those are the kind of the main components of what the seasoning is for okay. this. Uh, there's a few slices of ginger as well. Uh, maybe some fresh chilies in there. Uh, cabbage or dried uh, radish tops or dried um, cabbage leaves like uh, ugoji, ugoji. Sh- uh, shiregi, yeah. um, those things. They've got um, to have it for me. That's a proper kumja. Oh, thing same here. Got that in there. Yeah. Same here. And there's so many variations of this. I mean, this is the most famous one, I think, but um, kumja tang. But there's also um, pyo hejangu. Yep. There's ugoji that has, rather than having the big bones in there, it just has a lot more of the dried vegetables. Yeah, and a few um, like slithers of meat in there as well. Right, I yeah, had that yeah. on the weekend, ugoji tongue. That's one of my favorites. It is. Yeah. It's so good. And and if you don't want a whole lot of uh, protein, then, then that one's better for you. But look at these giant pieces of... Is that yeah. easy to get at butchers, not just in Korea, but abroad as well? Pork spine. You know, I don't see this cut very often back in the West. No, because it's like the um, proper spine. You can see like the different oh segments on the back, right? Yeah, yeah. But waste not, want not. I mean, it's it's delicious. It does take a little work um, <laughs> well, to, to get all the meat off the bone. But that's how I used to communicate with the people in restaurants before I learned to speak some Korean. How? Was, well, that, I would just show them how much I loved it by you know, cleaning the bowl <laughs> and just putting the bones in this little dish. And, and that's how I'd show them how much I enjoyed it. Yeah. When you go to eat this with Koreans for the first time, you know, you might be taken aback by some of my friends. Really, they do clean out the bone and you've yeah. got to get inside the bone as well. Like they're sucking out the contents of oh, the bone. Oh, sure, sure. Pulling and like, apart. Yeah. they look a bit weird. Some of the bits that get sucked out, but you eat them all and they this taste great. This making me really hungry just smelling this here. It is an amazing aroma here. So, so Ryan, for everyone out there who maybe mm-hmm. can get their hands on some pork spine, it's it's cheap here where you can get it, you were saying. Uh, big time, big summer. time. Like, you can get a whole, um, enough to do a pot like this Yeah. Uh, for maybe just six or seven bucks if you go to, like, wow. a proper butcher. Yeah. Because you know? there's not that much meat, like, easily accessible. Once you get in the nitty gritties, there's a, a fair amount. Well, you go to some places and they, they get a cut that has more meat left on the bone mm-hmm. um this one's not too bad but no. there's another piece in here that has more on it so. fantastic yeah, so can buddy. you talk us through how to make this then ryan you've yeah. given us the ingredients I'll, I'll start pouring some out maybe it's, while it's you're kind of interesting it. yeah careful it's really hot okay um but it's you know um in in western cuisine when we're making stock uh, we'll never throw away the water after after boiling or simmering meat you know um, but the idea That's the here, flavor, right? Right, right. So it really kind of threw me off when I first got here. I was like, "What? Why are they throwing away that water? That's like the essence of the meat." And, yeah. But um, but the the reason that's done is to remove a lot of the oil, remove a lot of the fat. Okay. Um, and and kind of clean it. So, um, a lot of Korean dishes are this way. When you take uh, beef. Any, especially if it's on the bone or pork and it's on the bone, you'll often soak it and leave water running over it overnight. In even. Korea, right? And it yeah. just runs off. Yeah, yeah. You're just you're just kind of washing it. You know, you're just uh, running cold water over the the pork spine bones uh, with that meat on there um, for sometimes as much as twelve hours. You know, uh, then you put it in a pot with boiling water and mm-hmm. bring it up to a good solid boil for like thirty minutes. And then throw all that water away. Again. Yeah. You would think that the meat loses all its flavor, maybe. Well, you're you're doing a couple of things. You're you're removing a lot of oil, um, a lot of fat from that, and you're also tenderizing the meat. You're cooking it enough to where it starts to get more and more tender. Uh-huh. There's an extra napkin if you need a bit. Oh no, this looks amazing. Um and and then the third time, okay, now you're gonna keep the water in there. Okay, all third right. time's lucky. The, right. That's so you, you keep so it you in. toss you you rinse it, then you boil it, toss that water out too, and then the third time, now you're gonna start adding your seasonings. Um, you're gonna get the soybean paste, the red pepper paste, the red pepper flakes, garlic, slices of ginger, um, and get the meat back in there and get it up to a boil again. Mm -hmm. And now it's going to go, bring it up to a boil and then reduce it to kind of medium heat for about an hour. And that's how you get this meat super, super tender. Where it is literally like falling off the bones. Exactly. I mean, let me, let me just show how soft this is if I can. I mean, this stuff is just succulent. 
That's what I love about the Kamcha tongue, where it just falls off as you're eating it. You can get a bit, a little bit soft with the chopstick, then you really go to town like putting it in your hands. And this That's sauce, it. as well as integral, is that the stew done, by the way? Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, then other ingredients go in there. You know, here there's some damyon, the starch noodles. Uh -huh. You often find that there. Um, we already talked about the shidegi or ogoji, the that are leaves that are dried, mm -hmm. and then they get reconstituted here. And they have a completely different texture then. Amazing. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, and uh, you put as a garnish at the end the genip, the perilla leaves, yeah, right? Yeah, and, and usually the, the chopped Korean leeks or the pa, they go on there as well. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe some fresh chilies. Um, let's see, I've got some mushrooms in here too. Um, you got some you rice cake you don't as have well. To have there. Yeah, a little bit of dulk. I've sure, not sure, seen sure. that before, but that would work well, I'm sure. Also dumplings, uh, the sujebi. The uh -huh. Korean style dumplings that don't have any kind of feeler, we call them like like in the West, it's chicken and dumplings are kind yeah. of the same thing. It's just like made out of flour and just stuff dough. like that, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. And they just add the textural side of things, and mm -hmm. then enjoy this with a bowl of rice, obviously. Yeah, sorry, I didn't Korean bring any. Ri oh, you got no. me a bowl too. Yes, Thanks, of course, Peter. Right. And then this sauce is like a kind of spicy. Korean mustard, exactly like a like a wasabi mustard kind yeah, of. Yeah, and yeah. you dip usually the meat into here. And there's and soy it. in there as well, and mm. just a touch of vinegar. Oh, smells good. It's so good with the meat. Okay, um, I, I really want to give this a try, right? Okay, it, buddy. so I get some of the meat. Is this uh, the shiragi or That's right. the shiragi? Oh, right. wow. Mmm. Oh, it tastes just like the restaurant, but better than the restaurant. Pretty wow. Good, huh? Oh. It's spicy, but not overwhelmingly so at all. Mmm, the I meat because you've cooked it for so long. It, 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 does that what is that what happens with any meat? If you just boil it for long enough, does it all become tender? Uh, yeah, pretty much. But yeah. you can go too far. Of course, it'll get uh, way too soft or start to fall off into little pieces, and know? then it's hard to all get together. Well, oh. Some recipes you want to do that, and some you don't. Yeah. This is so good. It is a bit spicy. Oh baby, oh, the rice cake as well. Mm. And when it when the weather's this cold, this mm. is so warming. Mm. Sorry, it's a little spicier than some. Mm. No, but that's good for me as well. Because you've got the rice cake. Yet. I will be sweating in the song break, I'm sure. Oh, Ryan, thank you for the last Yes Chef. This is absolutely perfect. We'll be back in part two with any of your messages and questions, mm. and we'll get to what's in your fridge later on. We're going to play a song right now. This is... Um, <laughs> oh my goodness, Rumi wa Kamja. Oh, we got the Gamja in the uh, the artist title for you. Oppa, I'm cold. Oppa, na chua. We're back for part two of Yes Chef. I am stuffing my face. This is getting spicier and spicier as I eat it as well, Ryan. I'm going to go on a little sweating adventure, I think. Um, we're talking all about Kamja Tang, which is pork backbone stew officially, or the pork spine stew. Also does have Kamja in there, potatoes, but the original proper origin is the pork spine used to be known as the kamja bia and like you said there are many iterations of this the bia hejangguk which is also using the pork spine i don't know is, is it different at all to kamja tang uh no it just doesn't have the potatoes oh yeah and, you're and right. that's another reason why uh -huh. people even koreans <laughs> as ah. well Get confused that uh, you know it's because of the potatoes. Yeah, it's called gamjatang. because the one with the potatoes is gamjatang. The one without is biohejang. Exactly. That is deliberately confusing. <laughs> it seems that's ridiculous, isn't it? Okay, we've got some messages to read out. I will do the honors while you're enjoying your stew over there. Uh, we've got some one from Annie here. Hello, Chef Ryan. Welcome back and good to see you on the video again. But I'm also sad that today is your last day with us. Uh, gamjatang is one of my favorite soups, so I'm looking forward to today's segment. So you've tried that out, Annie. Not too spicy. Great to hear that. Will from Canada says, not happy about the news. Why? This is probably the best segment, period. Please correct this uh, mistake thanks, and let Chef Ryan stay. Please, 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 please. Why chase something that works perfectly? Heartbroken. All the best to you, Chef. And I hope you make it back on air very soon. One of your biggest fans forever, Will. Thanks, Will. Uh, it's so true, Ryan. This is one of our favourite segments. Uh, one of my personal favourite ones as well. You come in with such delicious treats every week. I really appreciate it, although I'm going to cough with all this spice. Um, <laughs> Well, you never know. We, we, we were with uh, Edwin uh, years ago. Back and in then, the day. And then Adrian. Uh -huh. And then another call and, and met you. And, exactly. And uh, so you never know what will happen. Yeah, you've been with us from the start, Ryan. You're one of the last remaining original mm. hashtag Daily K guests. Mm. And I'm sure our paths will cross in the future. It's just due to season changes and budget issues and things. We couldn't keep letting Ryan cook all this stuff for not enough money, to be quite honest. So we're going <laughs> to hope in the future... 
we can get a big sponsor and then we'll be able to bring Ryan in with some delicious food again because uh, you have not even scratched the surface there's so much to Korean cooking isn't there that you could go on for forever really I'm you? still learning all the time exactly so I'm sure in the future Will please don't be too downbeat we'll be able to get Chef Ryan back mm. uh, Roz from the US says welcome back Ryan I've never tried this soup and intestines sound a little ominous due to a bad experience in my life. There's no intestines in here. No, no intestines no, in this it's one. It's just the pork spine, yeah. which, yeah, some of the bits that come out of in between the bones and maybe even the bone marrow, they look a bit weird. Well, there is there is the, um, what is it called? Um, the spinal cord. Ah, that's the weird looking bit, is it? Yeah. And, you know, in, in Mexico, one time on a, on a road trip across Mexico, yeah, um, about 10 years ago, I stopped at this little restaurant in the desert and saw in the menu this dish and I was like what is that and they explained it to me and it, it was spinal cord the, the soup was like a tomato and spinal cord soup and it they was just take really, out the spinal really, cord yeah just the spinal cord of the pig wow. so not just here in Korea oh, wow. enjoy yeah. elsewhere as well okay a delicacy yeah. in Mexico um, and you said I'm willing to give this a try should I have this in Jeju Island I believe I heard that this is a speciality there I'm mm. not sure about that the cum just hung is that known for in Jejda? I think it's a speciality everywhere. Yeah, and you see it everywhere. There's right. so many restaurants and people always have their favorite. Every yep. single person you talk to, if you mention Kam they're like, oh, I know the best place. Me too. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> it's north of the river. It's way out of my way. It's like behind Han Nam Dong. I can't remain, remember the name of the station. It's near Kumo Station, I think it's called, uh, just over a bridge. And mm. it's delicious. There's just something that's different about it. And you're it. willing to travel over there. Yeah, and to everyone get that I one. take there is like, why have we come so far? It tastes the same as everywhere else. But I think everyone has that, like, their favorite for mm -hmm. not an obvious reason. Yeah. Get addicted to it. Yeah, yeah, so good. And Siska from Indonesia says, Welcome back. Not a happy Tuesday. It's the final yes, chef. My oh. favourite segment. Could you guys keep Ryan for us? I don't want to believe this news. Today's dish is one of my favourites as well. Kamja Tang. Peter, do you love it? I do. Especially Ryan's version. Uh, it's one of my faves. I love potato in general. Here we cook potato soup in a different way. But my favourite one is with pork, but it's not spicy here. Uh, yeah, mm. that would be interesting as well, wouldn't it? The combination of tuenjang, the soybean paste, and the gochujang, the chili paste, mm -hmm. seems essential. Like, if you took away the spiciness, it wouldn't be kamjatang at all. Would right, it? you get the a little bit of spiciness. Mm -hmm. It's not mega spicy, and this one's a little spicier than most. Yeah. So don't gauge Peter's sweating no. by, you know... That's not the average one. response. <laughs> but the soybean paste is what gives you that depth and that... Uh, it's something just really heartwarming about um, any dish in Korea that that uses that. Yeah, yeah it really adds it's an so extra important. layer. You definitely need it in there. There is something that's not that common. My wife sometimes cooks it, I think, kamja kuk. And that's mm. not a spicy thing. She'll usually put in the potatoes and then she'll usually just put in some egg as well with it in there and some mm. soy sauce and it'll just be like a clear broth and it tastes quite nice. But this mm. is by far and away, I think, the most famous representative soup that has potatoes in it as well. Although having said that, in Tenjang Jjigae, you sometimes get potatoes in there. You know, sometimes like little chopped ones along mm -hmm. with the air hobak or the little kind of uh, I, think it, I think it depends on the price of potatoes that week. That's true. Yeah, yeah. it can be a bit they're, too expensive. They're, they're much cheaper in other countries often. Potatoes are, are kind of special here <laughs> by, you know, by comparison. Yeah. Know? In the UK as well, we have so many different types mm -hmm. of potatoes. In Korea, when you go to the average supermarket, there's usually just one. If you're right. lucky, two different choices. <clears throat> And then you just buy those and maybe you'll make some kamja chan as well, the pancakes with them, mm -hmm. which is quite nice. But in the UK, you have so many different, like they give you like the species name and then some are good for boiling, some are right. good for French fries, uh, some are good for this and that, mashed potatoes. Uh, but here you're right, it does seem like they're a bit pricey. Well, the Korean potato has to be able to handle heavy rains because we have the rainy season. Oh, I see. And, and so it is uh, more you know, moisture heavy potatoes. So it doesn't make uh, chips as well or uh -huh. French fries as well. Oh, is that why? And is that indoor... why I can't make them here? Well, I can, I can give you a trick if okay. you want to try yes, with this, please. this species of potato. Um, and I, and I can't take credit. This is, this is uh, from a chef friend of mine, um, chef John with, uh, with house of wings. Yeah. But he figured it out. He what takes, do do? he'll take these Korean potatoes, these moisture heavy potatoes, and he'll, um, parboil them 
Okay. Okay. That seems like you're adding more water. <laughs> well, yeah, but but hold on. Uh-huh. So as soon as they're getting tender, yep. take them out and then freeze them on a, on a sheet pan. Freeze them? Yeah. What's happening then is that starch that's in the water just on the on the outside of them, uh-huh. okay? Because potatoes have a lot of starch in them that comes yep. out. Um, that will freeze onto each wedge of the potato. Okay? Right. These are already sliced. Okay. You've right? sliced. Okay. And then when you drop them into the fryer, frozen, mm-hmm. that starch is staying right there and you get that extra crispiness that you're looking for. Oh, on the edge. And then it's tender on the inside. Ooh. And it makes it more like uh, Western style chips. That's the key. Freeze them. He's the only one I know who's actually done this and made it work. That sounds and, unique, doesn't and it? Yeah. I've had them. They are fantastic. Ooh. But you still can taste the flavor of the Korean, you know, fresh potato. That makes them unique. As opposed to all it? the frozen ones that are imported, you know. For, sure. For what time. a brilliant idea. I'm going to have to give that a try. I love making chips at home when I was in the UK. That's what we call mm. fries. But it's so difficult here. You're enjoying your kamjatang. In part three, we'll get to what's in your fridge. So this is the last one of the season. We've already got loads that have come in, but if there's anyone else, join the queue and we'll try and fit in everybody's today. You have been listening to us here on Hashtag Daily K if you're watching this video on YouTube. It's going to be uploaded in the next couple of days. Our show in general talks about Korean culture from 9 to 11 a.m. every single day, although from next week, February 19th, we will be broadcasting an hour earlier from 8 to 10 a.m. So keep up to date with all your Korean news and trends on the show we'll play a song and then get to what's in your fridge this is going to be Park Jebom, Jay Park's Chua Ryan hands down my favourite yes chef ever today I've had two helpings of that I was actually worried that I wouldn't get to eat lunch today because I have something afterwards but thank you We'll keep a bowl for later, man. Thank you for doing this for me. It's so, so good. My mouth is a little bit on fire, but that's all right as well. I always tend to kick it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, but it makes things exciting in the studio. I thought about putting some of the uh, the Carolina Reaper powder in there, but I, I you didn't. decided not to. Thank you for doing Just that for at you, least. Buddy. Yeah. All right, we got a load of what's in your fridges today. And a load of lovely messages. I'm going to have to read them because I know how modest and humble you are, Ryan. We got, uh, I don't know, which one do you want to start with? And I'll read the message. Um, your pick. You, you, you go ahead, man. All right, go ahead. I'm going to go for Audrey in France. I think she was the first one to get a message up today. Mm. Uh, hello, King Peter. Hello, Chef Ryan. Welcome back on the show. But I'm sad because it seems we all have to say goodbye at the same time. I really hope to see you back soon on Arirang. Many people will miss you for sure. And yes, I'm one of them. And of course, I'm not going to miss the last opportunity to send in my fridge. A very special one, actually. Well, don't worry, Ryan, you can still see him on reruns on Adidang TV from something you shot years ago. Tons of them up there. Yeah. Tons so of them. Just turn on the TV and you'll see him there. You can check him out on some of our, uh, on all of the YouTube videos as well. Yes, Chef, type that in along with hashtag Daily K and you'll find us on YouTube too. Uh, it doesn't really help Ryan, although, yeah, you can see his face at least when you miss him, right? Uh, and you've said, after months of looking it for it, I finally managed to find some Pluma Ibiza. Iberica, yummy, yummy, yummy. My tummy is looking forward to that. I don't know what that is. I'm going to search for that. Salmon, gambas, which is that shrimp, I think. Uh, Dry cured chorizo, zucchini, butter mushrooms, sweet pepper, fennel, carrots, parsnips, romanesco, potatoes, oranges, kumquats, lime and apples. As always, a well-stocked fridge, uh, Audrey. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I see some more things than, than you just read off too. And I was looking at this one a minute ago. Okay. And I've been thinking a lot about apples and pears and nuts and things and dessert kind of dishes. The single cream can go really well with that as well. Um, have you ever done, uh, any kind of desserts with pears before, like a roasted pear with like rum sauce? Oh, my anything? father used to love roasted pear, but mm. not me because English pears have lots of stones in them, you know, the hard oh, right, bits. Right, 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 right. So I didn't like them. You did, man, you're so fussy. Yeah. Uh, I love Korean pears though. The yeah. best in the world in my opinion. Oh, and the Christmas. It's, I mean, if you've never had an Asian pear... And if you and if you have had jicama, I, I think of it as kind of like a, a, the jicama of pears. Okay, um, what's a jicama? <laughs> I knew you were going to ask. It's a Mexican uh, root vegetable uh-huh. that is not sweet, really. It has a tiny bit of sweetness to it, yeah. but it has that crispness just like an Asian pear. Oh. So they go really well in like salads in, the, in, in Mexico. They'll put chili uh, 
uh, chili powder uh -huh. and lime and salt on them. Ooh, just... They do add that crunch, mm -hmm. don't they? The Korean pears as well. That's it. That's it. So, well, I guess what I'm thinking, Audrey, though, is um, is some kind of dessert. I've been helping this group out on the West Coast with a menu um, with their pears from their farm there and been looking at a lot of different ideas. I'm sure you know where I'm kind of going with this. Um, you know, when you take cloves, um, often rum goes really well with pears, um, but cloves and uh, nutmeg and cinnamon and pear, and you can roast them um, and then top them off with single cream. Also, ricotta cheese goes really well with that. Oh. You may be familiar with the Italian cake uh, that uses pear and almonds. Oh, I've heard so, of that. so good, so good, so moist. Um, that's where I would go with, with some of the things you have in your fridge. Your pine nuts could go in that well. You say you've got a lot of spices. I hope you've got the cinnamon. I'm sure you do. The cinnamon, the clove, and, and maybe a touch of allspice, nutmeg as well. Um, those go really well with that. And then you can kind of hit it with a little bit of lime at the end just to brighten flavors up. And always remember to use zest as well. And I know that doesn't use everything in your fridge, but uh, that would be pretty that's, hard. That's where my head's going there. Yeah, you've got a lot on here today. Fantastic. I that's look awesome. forward to Audrey posting up her like Michelin star quality picture of the food as I well. I know, every time. It looks amazing. She did a brilliant pasta that Joe recommended as well. Looked like the best pasta I'd ever seen. Uh, mm -hmm. Ross from the US says, Hello, Chef Ryan. I'm so sad to hear you won't be hosting Yes Chef any longer. Yes Chef will not exist. Without Ryan, there is no Yes Chef. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, so I will take this last opportunity to submit my fridge. Fresh chicken breast, Brussels sprouts, sour cream, butternut squash, firm tofu, button and cremini mushrooms, head of cabbage, carrots, green bell peppers, broccoli, radish, Korean radish that is, homemade guacamole and salsa, corn tortillas, horseradish, mescaline fresh ginger and picked ginger, <laughs> Korean pear and hummus. Way too much. Wow. Okay. What can All right. we do? All right, Roz, here's a challenge for you. Okay, first thing you're going to do is get that head of cabbage, uh -huh. okay? And uh, chop it up pretty fine, okay? Put it in a big mixing bowl. Yeah. Sprinkle over some salt. If you could weigh it, if you could weigh the cabbage, and yeah. say the way, the cabbage weighs, um, say, 500 grams, mm -hmm. then you want to have about eight grams or so of salt. Okay. And that you're looking for about a 3%, a 2 to 4% is fine. Okay. Okay, um, of the weight of salt to the cabbage. Okay, and now this is the fun part. Get your hands in there and, and just kind of punch it and mix it and squeeze it and get the moisture to come out of the cabbage, the natural moisture that's in there. And once you've done that for about 20 minutes, then you're going to pack that all into a jar. And the trick here is to have as little air space as possible. So if you really fill up the jar full, yeah. um, it's easier. But what I'll do, even if I don't fill up the jar full, is I'll take just a simple like um, uh, plastic bag, kind of like this one here. Yeah. And put water inside that. Okay. Okay. And then drop that inside the jar. Just to squeeze all the air out. Right. It pushes okay. the airspace out so that um, so there's less air touching the cabbage. And what you're going to do is put this in a cool, dark place, like under the sink or something, and leave it for two weeks, and you'll have sauerkraut. What? Which is oh. the most healthy, amazing thing that you can eat. The really. German it's kind so, of kimchi. So good. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh -huh. um, now kimchi is awesome for you too. This one, man, it's it's so easy. It just takes time. Um, just trust yourself. Give it a shot. Once you've got the sauerkraut, now if you wanted to jar it, can it, then you have to pasteurize it. But I recommend you don't. Just move it to the fridge and then you've got all that probiotic awesomeness of sauerkraut. <laughs> um, I, I try to have some actually every day because it's so it's, really? it's really good. And you'll notice that the cab the sauerkraut will taste better than anything you've ever bought in the store. Wow. Um, it'll have more sweetness from the cabbage okay. that you're that you normally have. When you when you get that um, with the rest of your fridge, goodness. You know, what? one of my favorite things to do is sauerkraut. I don't see any pork on here, but um, uh, my my dad uh, and actually my grandmother would make this one with um, applesauce yeah. and, uh, and sauerkraut and a little bit of brown sugar, uh -huh. um, or you could use honey, yeah. and, and pork chops. Yeah, it goes and really well with pork. Have you had it? this before? Uh, they have some sauerkraut in the UK as well, yeah. like the German influence. Yeah, it tastes great with pork. You throw it in the slow cooker and forget about it. Um, also, maybe some whole stewed tomatoes in there as well, mm -hmm. and it's just phenomenal. Yeah. Um, it's a one-dish meal. It's really simple. Um, I know I'm going off your fridge a little bit, but that's where my head's going. You uh, may be trying with a chicken breast. so yeah. much. Just mainly I wanted to t give you the hint about the... the 
making your own sauerkraut because yeah. it's really fun and easy to do, and you'll your your life will be better from it. I guarantee. Fantastic, you. like a, a simpler version of kimchi as well, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and then if you want to go to the next level, then you can start adding some red pepper flakes, some garlic, <laughs> and you'll you'll have your kimchi. Go the whole hog. Uh, so. The sad guna we've got from Spain. Uh, good morning, gents. Last fridge for now. Sad. Thanks for the great dishes, fridges, and vibes. You two hopefully will be reunited again before long, as it's Lunar New Year this week and rice cake season. I want to ask you to recommend me a gluten-free rice cake dish to make. Anything I don't already have, I can pick up at the Asian supermarket, Ryan. So feel free to go crazy. But I do have some fresh flat rice cakes, the ones that need to uh, be well. I don't understand that. And freshest round duck bokki. But I also have glutinous rice and copious amounts of rice flour. So can you recommend anything? Tasha, I was, I was, I saw this message as soon as I got in here today, and I was frantically searching because i'm not man i'm not real great at this gluten-free stuff okay so i'll I'll do some more research for you but all i can say to those listening is that you know rice cakes are made from short grain rice here in korea or sometimes glutinous rice so it's pretty it's pretty tough to get those textures of like tok or tokboki or or something like that without the gluten. Yeah. Um, you know, the the gluten-free rice cakes that you'll find in the store, they'll often be made from brown rice um, or other kinds of um, rice that are, that have lower gluten or, or no gluten at all. Yeah. Um, so I will try to do some research for you, Tasha, I promise, and get back to you with some ideas there. I did see a few, but I have to research them more before I can speak on them um, to you and help you out there. Okie dokie. Ryan, it is coming towards the end of the segment. I'm sorry, Siska, that we couldn't get to your fridge, but I wanted to give uh, Ryan some time to say goodbye to the listeners it's been such a pleasure having you on the show oh man this has really been a lot of fun for me uh especially this one i mean it was great doing shows with uh with edwin and adrian no, but don't bringing... lie they're rubbish they're terrible <laughs> but, but bringing <laughs> in bringing in the food and having the camera here yeah. and um you know really the best part for me has been the connections that we've made with with the listeners and no joke um seeing the posts that you guys put up of the food that that we maybe suggest something and then getting to see it in the next 24 hours it's it's really um that bounce back yeah. is is really something powerful and i've been using a lot of that in things that I've done with with cooking classes or even consulting for restaurants, because um, I get to send out ideas and then get them, you know, you guys make them, post them, and and I see it uh, in reality and take it from there. So it's it's that's been the, the most special part. It's been amazing. Yeah, thank you, listeners, for making this experience all the more worthwhile, and thank you, Ryan, the most for coming up with these amazing dishes on the fly with what's in your fridge, and then the beautiful food you've brought in for us. We will truly be forever grateful. And I'm sure we'll see you again in the future, Ryan, okay? Take care. Here, man. Happy New Year as well yeah, for this week. Yeah. All right, love you, buddy. Yeah. We're going to play a, a very fitting song, Farewell Moment. It's Ibyol Sungan from Jonggi Bemjangok.